In today's tutorial, we are working with Oracle Cloud's free tier using their free Ampere CPU, and we're gonna be combining that with the free plan of Cloudflare. So you've got the free Cloudflare cloud delivery network, which is probably the best free one you can get, and combining that with the best probable free virtual machine you can get. And in this example, we're gonna be using Cloud Panel as a free panel to uh, manage that server. And we're gonna, for example, launch this WordPress website on this setup. So I've had a few comments um, asking for this particular setup. And I think this is a really nice way of combining the best possible uh, free VPS with the best possible uh, free cloud CDN as well. So I think this is a very interesting uh, use case for all these free products. Um, so let's get into it. Head over to our Oracle Cloud dashboard and let's build this thing. This is basically the same as my previous Nextcloud video, but in this case, we're just using Cloudflare rather than uh, Namecheap. So I think this is actually more secure and a bit more powerful as well. So I think this is a quite a good setup. So let's just get started and uh, build this server. All right, so we are logged into our free tier account here and we're under get started. We are going to create a VM instance. Give our instance a name there and image and shape. We're going to use Ubuntu for our image. So uh, we change that to canonical Ubuntu 2204 here and select that one. 2204 is what is uh, supported and Debian 11 is also supported. So I'm gonna use 2204 Ubuntu for this one. And our shape, we can change this to Ampere because Ampere is fully supported on here as well. Six gigabytes of memory and one CPU is fine here. Um, we're gonna paste in an SSH key. So I'm using Windows, so I like to use PuTTY to create my SSH key. So I'm just gonna use the tool called PuTTY Gen that comes with PuTTY and we're gonna click generate and just wiggle your mouse to generate a key there. That's just some random data that's gonna create our key. We just have to copy that key. I'm gonna save it onto my drive as well. So let's save our, our private key there and I'll save our public key as well. And we're actually gonna paste in our key into uh, the setup here. So copy that one and paste it in there. Looks all good. Now make sure you've pasted that properly because that's important. And we're gonna specify a boot size. You can actually increase that if you want. By default, you've got 50 gigabytes, but you can actually increase it up to 200 if you like. So I'm just gonna use 50 for this, for this demonstration, but uh, then we can go ahead and click create. Um, so this is gonna be orange while it's provisioning. And just be patient while this sets up. Just notice with PuTTY, make sure you've got the latest version of PuTTY if you're using uh, Ubuntu 22 because um, older versions of PuTTY didn't work when I tested it. So just make sure you may need to up update your PuTTY if you haven't for a while. Um, so I've got my IP address now and we can use that later. Now, after a minute, it's gonna change to green and running. So now we can actually connect to this IP address. So just paste in your IP address into PuTTY and then we put Ubuntu as our username at the IP address there. I'm gonna save this as Cloud Panel, and click Save there. And also we're gonna to point to our SSH key. So under SSH and Auth, we can browse to that key that we downloaded earlier. So um, just browse to that key, the private key that we did earlier and save this again. So that should be all good to go. Click Accept there and connect to our server. So this is looking okay. Basically what we wanna do is change to the super user. So now we're operating as root and we wanna run some updates and upgrades on our server before we install Cloud Panel. So we're gonna run this one. This is our update and upgrade. So just copy that command from the um, Cloud Panel docs. Also from my blog, I'll put everything I did on my blog as well. Um, so just right click to paste and then enter and then it'll run the updates. Just be patient while the updates run here. You might get something like this where you just have to press enter, um, but yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. Just let it do its thing. Okay, after it's all updated and upgraded, what we can do is put our script in. So this is the script for MySQL. Um, there's a few other uh, databases that are supported, so just choose your preferred database, but we basically just let it run and let it install. While it's installing, we can actually go to our um, instance and go to our virtual cloud network here. We can set up the ports while we're waiting. So go to your subnet there and your default security list should be there. By default, it should look something like this. You've got port 22 for SSH, but we're gonna add some more ports here. So uh, source CRDR is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 TCP there. And the ports that we need to do this are 44380, 8443, and for FTP, we can add 20 and 21 and 49152 to uh, 65534. If you want FTP, um, you can add those on. But if uh, you're not using FTP, just those first three for our website. And I'm going to call that Cloud Panel for the description. That looks all good. 
Um, so just make sure it looks like that. Um, this is still ticking away, so just be patient while this is installing that. Okay, it look, looks like it's all done. We can actually com uh, connect to our server on that IP address there. So, I mean, at the moment, it doesn't look like it's working. I think what we do is do a server reboot here and just wait a second. So after about a minute or so, we should be able to get to our, our website here. So I think it looks better now. We've got a SSL warning. We can proceed to our website and then we can actually set this up. So just fill in your admin form here with your username and password and create a user. And now we can go ahead and log into our panel. This all looks fine. So let's head over to Cloudflare and set up our domain. Okay, so now we can actually add our server to our Cloudflare site. So over on Cloudflare, I'm on my homepage here. I've got idea test site already added to my Cloudflare account. If you haven't added your domain to Cloudflare, just go through the add a site process. You can use the free plan to do this like I'm doing here. So under our site, I'm using idea test site here and we're gonna add some DNS records here. So there's basically just three records we need to add to get this to work. So the first one is the panel. So the cloud panel, I'm gonna use CP for that and that'll be at cpideatest.site. In this case, I'm gonna point it to our server app IP address there, save that in. We're gonna do the same thing just for the root. Just put at for root and point that to our IP address. And the last one is just for the C name, www. So that is that and that points to our idea test site. I can just highlight that and paste that in. Okay, so those three look good. Now there is one trick here. Uh, these ones are okay to proxy through Cloudflare, but for the setup, we don't want to proxy the um, cloud panel subdomain. We're going to have to leave that DNS only for this process just while we set this up. So let's actually just check and make sure we've got that working. Um, idea test site. And we're going to test I, uh, CP, idea test site for the cloud panel. I accidentally put an extra space in there. Let's search. Let's make sure it's hitting our server IP, which it is. Cloudflare is very fast at updating, so um, as soon as you change it, it should pretty much hit that um, IP address straight away. So this looks good. And we only need to leave that unproxy just for a few minutes while we set up our um, cloud panel domain on here. So we go to admin area here and the settings there. And I'm going to put in our um, CP idea, idea test site. There we go. We can save that on. And this should issue a Let's Encrypt certificate. So just while it's issuing its first Let's Encrypt certificate, it needs to verify the domain with the real IP address so that it looks green, it's working okay. Now that that's working okay, we can actually access the site through CP IDEA test site. And we can go here. I've noticed that it doesn't work straight away. So it's good to wait a couple of minutes and then maybe restart the browser and then it should be working. So I just waited a couple of minutes and restarted Chrome and I can come back and I can see this is working just fine. The SSL on CP idea test site is taking us to our login page. We can log in with our user and password that we created earlier and here we go. Now that this is working, we can go ahead and add a site. Let's do a WordPress site and let's just fill this out. So I just filled that out with our domain, idea test site in this case, title, uh, username and password for the WordPress admin and go ahead and click create. This will have a little countdown here on how many percent it's finished. So just wait for that to finish. After that finishes, it'll say your WordPress site has been created. So you'll get some uh, credentials here for your site, also for your database as well and your WordPress um, admin as well. So make sure you keep um, these handy. You can actually copy and paste that. I'm going to put these in Notepad and keep them safe. Okay, now we can head back to sites here and we can click manage. What we want to do is put uh, some SSL on here. So we go to the SSL tab here. We want to import a certificate. So we're going to import a Cloudflare certificate into these boxes here. So we go back to our Cloudflare dash. I'm using idea test site here. We're going to go to SSL and we're going to use an origin server certificate here. We're going to create that certificate. And then all we do is click create. This is a 15 year certificate we can use. Let's just copy that one. That is the certificate. So we paste that into our certificate box there. Make sure you get that right. That's the private key that goes in the private key box. So that looks all good. You can leave that one blank, import and install. We should get a success message, so that looks all good. Sorry about the background noise. I think a motorbike scared my neighbor's dog. You could hear that in the background going off. Um, let's actually look at our uh, SSL again here. 
and we want to set that to full strict. Uh, I think it, by default it can be set to flexible. So just make sure we change that to full strict. And now this should work. So just heading over to idea test site here, we can see it's all working well. We've got the R security on there and the connection is secure. Let's have a look at the certificate. This is a Cloudflare certificate, so that looks awesome. The other thing we can do from here now, this is a working, we can go back to our DNS and the actual cloud panel subdomain. Now that can be proxied through Cloudflare now as well. We've got everything set up. So this should still work just fine, even on our, on our panel. Looks like we're all good still. So, I mean, that's pretty much all, the, all there is to it. Now that we are running the site through Cloudflare, we can go back to our sites and with ID test site, we can actually engage that uh, extra security setting. So if we have a look under, I think it's under security. If we go down, yeah, Cloudflare, we can allow traffic from Cloudflare only and save that on. And now our website is gonna be super safe. Anything trying to access ID test site has to go through Cloudflare and that adds another layer of security. So I quite like that, that feature um, using Cloudflare through Cloud Panel, so very nice. The other main features you wanna look at are databases and file manager. We covered that in the previous video. I'll link that at the end of the video if you wanna haven't checked those out already. The other thing worth mentioning here are the PHP settings. You'll find those under settings. So the PHP limits for your site, you scroll down, you'll find the PHP settings here. By default, um, they're a bit low, I think 64 megabytes. Um, we can actually increase that. You may want to import a whole website, for example. Um, you may want to bump that up quite a bit, particularly using WordPress if you're importing an existing site in here. Um, you'll find that option here. PHP version's there by default. We've got number eight. Um, but that's where you'll find these. If you're running into any PHP errors, um, you may want to change those settings. But um, I think that's pretty much all we need to do. The other thing someone asked me was about updates. So Cloud Panel documentation, there is a shortcut to update uh, Cloud Panel. Um, it's just CLP-update. You do that through your um, uh, Putty connection. So basically just pay, uh, connect to Putty like we did earlier in the video and run that CLP update, press enter, and it'll check. Nothing to do, we are already up to date. So that looks all good. So that pretty much wraps it up. We've got our WordPress website running through Cloud Panel and everything is being directed through the Cloudflare security. So this is quite a good way of setting this up. The other thing that would be really nice to add on if you're using this method is Cloudflare email forwarding. So you can use your custom domain and forward all your emails through to wherever you like. So um, I'll put that at the end of the video as well. Probably worth combining this method with that method. Um, but yeah, check that one out too. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.